afternoon, everyone. I'm sitting out here in the community garden. They're having some kind of seminar over here. I can't tell what it is. I can't tell what it is, and I didn't ask anyone. But they have people juggling, so I'm assuming they're having some kind of training here for some company. They have some people juggling some um, bowling pins. So I'm not sure what kind of business they could be in, entertainment or something. I'm not sure. But, um,. If I felt like taking a walk, I would show you guys this great art gallery that's for lease. I would love to use it for zero to 60 entertainment administrative offices. Like I said, I don't want a studio because I feel like that's a waste of money in my mind. I mean, of course, unless a filmmaker is leasing it, but it's a waste of money because you have to pay staff to keep it clean. I mean, you don't want to walk in somebody's fucking studio and dust everywhere. Somebody done fucked up the toilets. And then you got nobody to come in and clean that shit up. I ain't cleaning it up. I'm not cleaning it behind your ass. I'm not cleaning behind your stank ass. So I'm not going to get a studio. I'm just going to get administrative offices. And if I'm making a film, I'll lease a studio for, the period, for that period of time. I mean, how many films can you make in one year? I personally won't make more than one. One or two. More, not more than one. One a year. So, so if I, if I could make one a year, one every other year, and I got a hundred that I'm that I have uh, as a writer, I won't even use them. So I can probably sell sell half of them and, and make half of them. So that would be great. So I, I'm only going to get an administrative office, maybe a, with enough room for a mini party, which I probably won't need that. Just like they're leasing this for their training, I could probably lease a building for the party or something. But with that being said, but with that being said, I came on to say this, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm so embarrassed by my spiritual life because I feel like God is saying to me, if you pray or praise me through this situation, but I feel if my body's under attack, that's not easy to do. And if I don't know what I'm doing, then that's not easy to do. But since you offer me that way, then I'll go ahead and do it. But people won't say, well, why are the white people not? Well, what if nobody in the world loves you? What if nobody in the world loves you? You're going to take advantage of that? You're going to take advantage of that to improve your personal life? Well, why you say that person trying to improve their personal life? Well, I say, you know, I'm going to ask the local public figure here to, to end a, a lot of money. So, uh, I might have an experiment, case study number two. Case study number one will be an introduction. Case study number two might be an experiment as a public figure. A black woman, a white woman, a white teen, and a black teen to mimic me in my personal life to see just why that's such a, that you feel is so beneficial and what is gained from that, and see why this person think they I, something in my personal life they want. And you want to say, Cynthia, why are you accusing them of wanting something in your personal life? Well, if they're wealthy, then what else do they need? Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put this out there. I'm gonna make this assertion. Yesterday I met a gentleman that said that I asked him, what do you think the big one is? You know, based on the cliche my mom used to tell me. My mom used to say that if you get the big one, the rest of them will run. And I'm going to tell you the story behind that one day, but I don't feel like it right now. Um, I'll tell you the story behind that. If you get the big one, the rest of them going to run. Well, what she means is... If you take out the leader, the followers will scatter. If you take out the leader, the followers will scatter. That's what that cliche means. It's an analogy. If you take out the leader, the, look at these two damn bees. Ooh, I hope they made it and no one bother me. Ooh. But I think I might have to get out their garden. But anyway, um, I've seen better gardens, but I'm going to go under the... Uh, I think it's a community garden that people probably just come here and work when they have time. But they don't have a real gardening person to actually to actually 
uh, nurture the soil so that you have some real fruit or vegetables to grow. I'm seeing tomatoes and figs. Wish the figs would been ate up by, I guess the squirrels that ate the figs up. Now, that's a curiosity for me. It look like that's a pecan tree right there, but I don't want to know if that, I'm not sure if that's a pecan tree. I, it's no real pecans on the ground. And I, I know people get sick. I know Georgia's sick of me comparing Georgia to Louisiana because there's nothing the same about it. Georgia's a very enjoyable place. I have to say I had some salad and some, I had two salads. One was a mozzarella and peaches, grill on the grill. Oh, that was some good. And another one was uh, undoing salsa and peaches with spinach. Oh, that was some good. I ain't lying. I got the recipe for that one. I need to get the one for the mozzarella and the peaches. But if, if you were Louisiana, the... The feet will be, the limbs of the tree will be dragging the ground. The squirrel that ate the few little feeders. I don't know if you can see that fig tree with my, my little pitiful little phone camera. I need to buy me a new camera that can zoom in. It's a little piece, it's a piece of little fig tree, look like three branches on it. And the squirrel that ate the few little feeds and grow it on it. In Louisiana, they will have, it will be, it will span, the tree will probably span. 15 feet in the air and 10 feet across and all the limbs will be dragging the ground with right feeds and I could just go get a basket and make preserve or make some pie or make you know uh, just some fresh feeds but I guess a squirrel but I, we have squirrels in Louisiana but I had said the Georgia mascot is a squirrel I think it's an eagle I don't know but I said the Georgia mascot it's so many squirrels and chipmunks around here around here but you got to praise God because I think they say it's snakes around here. So that must be food for the snake. And it's rabbits, it's rabbits and squirrels and chipmunks jumping around. I can see why it's really not a lot of foliage and vegetables and stuff. Because probably the wildlife is eating it. But we could, I could get a bag right now. I could take one of the grocery bags from Kroger. Fill it up with pecans. Go sit down and crack them and make me some candy. Just for picking up in the yard. And I'm looking, I don't see that one pecan on the ground. God forgive me. It may not be, it may not be seeds. I know in Louisiana, it'd be a little colder before the pecans begin to drop, drop on the trees. But with that being said, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit comparing it. Apples to oranges. It's a wonderful place. I ain't going to lie. Think about that salad. Make me want to go get me another one. But, the pretty butterfly. But with that being said, I do need a, I do need a camera. But with that being said, child, I bought three cell phones on my business account, and they want me to pay those off before I uh, get any more equipment, like a dumbass. But anyway, but anyway, um, but anyway, what I was saying is that. You know, the Lord is telling me to pray. But I said, you know, what am I doing? Am I being faithless? Am I being faithless? He's telling me to praise him, to pray and to praise him. And the only reason I will still write my play and sit on a hill is because people saying this is make-believe. If, if you can't bring forth no fruit in your life, that, sh that play is make-believe. Or it's just a something to, uh, to meet the requirements of the religious genre. You know, like... The, uh, the genres of fiction are, and you probably it's probably a lot, romance, action, mystery, sci-fi, um, horror, thriller, um, mind twister, mystery, I said mystery, murder, um, crime. So we have all the genres, and now religion is a genre. And, and I'm saying that I'm not. I'm not saying that they classify religion as a, uh, a a writing genre or a fiction genre. I'm I'm saying that you know then we got self help of course, uh, non fiction autobiographies and so on and so on. But you know they uh, ooh, they classify. Uh, re I'm saying that religion can be classified as a genre because if you look around. Um, then we got family and kids and cartoons and so on and so on. And so if I write the play, it would have to be an entertainment genre. Because if I'm not bringing forth fruit in my life, then what's wrong? I don't understand that. So we'll see. We'll see if I can, if I can uh, have walk by faith enough 
to overcome this financial furnace, this obstacle as quote unquote financial furnace. That's an analogy. But I'm saying Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thrown in the furnace because they would not bow down to the uh, pagan gods. And I don't know what the pagan gods were. I think they had taken the image of the king and called it a god and, and demanded that the citizen bow down to it. I don't know what the religion was at that time. But the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these were Israelite captives that the king had educated in the college and in the uh, education and the customs of the uh, Babylonians. But they still believe that, retain their personal belief, even though their career and their job of, of employment was to work as advisors to the king. So they still retain their personal life that was religious. And the Bible said that he, when they wouldn't bow down, the king commanded they be thrown into the fear of furnace. Lord have mercy, Jesus. But the king loved at them because they were very, they must be very likable men. And they said the king loved at them, but he had to retain his royalty. And so he had to stand by his decree. And so he had them thrown into the fear of furnace. And they said the men that threw him in the fire burned up and died. He said, but the men dropped down and the ropes came off and they began to walk around and say, the king, look in. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, had the God that you worship save you. And say, he said, his four men was in the fire. He said, yes, old king. And the king came, hey, drew him out the furnace. And it's something. And I'm saying that I'm in a financial furnace. I'm in a, uh, a attack, a personal attack. I don't even know why. I said, but we're going to believe that God is in this first woman. I want people to watch. Is my faith come through? I'd be more confident as my faith come through that I can complete my plate. I'm writing, sit on the hill and, and uh, go in my office. I want the art gallery. But like I said yesterday, it's also an Annabella home. They'll make a beautiful office. It's a, it is an office. The man to turn their whole home into the office. There's no one occupying it. It's bad. It's like a landscape outside. The whole office. I would love to turn that to my administrative office. This is like, it's bad. Um, it is bad. And if I could go ahead and garner that and go and sit down in my office and work and overcome this in front of the whole world, my faith will overcome. Jesus said, He told Peter, I pray for you, your faith fail not. Lord, increase my faith, help my faith not to fail. I said, You have faith as a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. I speak to the mountain in the name of Jesus and tell it to be removed. Tell his mountain to move out my way to, to garner in my office. I tell the mountain to move out my way to garner my home. I tell the mountain to move out my way to remove these enemies that are attacking me because they're jealous. Because they're jealous. And that's something. People, and I said, I was saying it um, in the video that I want to ask people to mimic me to see what this person is gaining. Then why you say it's personal? You know, I had said I had asked a gentleman yesterday, and I didn't want to keep asking too many people, but I, because he was so he was so bad that I didn't want to be upstage with my uh play, the big one, with my uh movie, with my screenplay. But he said he think it was probably, you know, a bank a bank heist. But I'm like, okay, now think, let's take that for a moment, a bank heist. Who's gonna heist the bank? Some hood people? Well, let's say. Some black men, some white men. We'll say a white man, a Caucasian, an African American, a, 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 a Pakistani Indian, and a, um, a Asian. Well, we all know they can walk in that bank, damn near invisible, with the mastermind behind the Indian, the, the brilliance that the Indian people have. Them people overeducate themselves. The Asians, them people overeducate themselves. But we also had a black whiz kid. My son is a smart young man. He's had straight A's since kindergarten. And he's in, uh, Lord have mercy, but he's in 10th grade now. My son has had straight A's since kindergarten. And he's in 10th grade. My son's a whiz kid, so we have the black man sitting at the table. But also he would have the advantage of having street sense because he grew up in a fast hood environment. So we had a black man with a dual, a dual talent here in this, in this bank heist. And what would the white man do? Well, of course, the white man has white privilege. So he'll walk in talking highly articulate and with his white privilege and go unnoticed. So that's what we'll have. So imagine that scenario. You know what I'm saying? And all we have to do is put all kind of stuff in put all kind of bullshit in it. 
You know what I'm saying? Put all kind of bullshit in it. And so, if that movie is a blockbuster and she don't want that, what she want? The motherfucker wants something personal for something. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that crazy? Once I first got enough money for the scene and, and watch somebody in private life. This motherfucker got enough money for them watching my That's unbelievable. So I said I was gonna ask a local public figure to see what the bitch experienced in watching my private life. I said, look, I want you to do this and see what she experiencing. See this ugly motherfucker experiencing watching my private life. Oh god damn, let me show my ass about the fucking weird ass bug. Now this is a weird looking ass bug. I I see a bee. I see uh, a butterfly. I ain't never seen no book like that. Let me get my ass up out of this garden. Let me get my ass up out of the community garden and shit. I ain't finna garden nothing. I ain't finna garden. I ain't finna pick this shit. The animals to ate off of. If you were, if you had tomatoes, tomato vine right here. If they had some fresh tomatoes, you know, you just have at home have fresh tomatoes and mustard greens in the backyard. You could pick one right off the vine and make you a sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Or make you a little salad. But I, I don't think they um, come and nurture the garden. I think the community people come and nurture the garden like they need to. Because there's nothing growing. But like I say, if they did, then the jalapeno, look the fucking animals ain't going to eat the jalapeno. What is that? That's habanero pepper. Look, that's what I say to animals. Eat. These animals is eating these fruit that's growing in here. Look at that. The lavender is pretty. The jalapeno pepper is untouched. Fucking animals don't eat that. That's what's wrong. These chipmunks and rabbits and squirrels are eating the... Uh, is eating the, the vegetables and fruit that's growing in here. And it touched some fucking jalapeno. Let me see if I can let walk over there with the camera. And it touched I mean, ate up all the damn tomatoes and figs. And the, they had a cantaloupe and a watermelon. They ate all that shit up. <laughs> they ain't touched them habanero. What is that damn habanero press? They ain't touched that. What kind of peppers is that? Some kind of peppers. I can't tell. I can't tell what kind of peppers that is. That's, I don't know if that's habanero or something else. It looks like a habanero pepper. But um, then they got some daisies over there. I don't know what that is. Some sunflowers. I don't know if that's the formal name for it. But uh, everything that you can eat is gone, except them peppers. But. Ooh, that damn bug is gone. I'm going to sit down for a couple more minutes then. Because I was talking. I was saying something. For the big dad. But big ass bug came and scared the hell out of me. God forgive me. Bible says that I will not fear in the name of Jesus. Because God is with me everywhere I go. Lord have mercy. I know Jesus is sick of me being scared of bugs. But thank you Lord for going with me everywhere I go. But um, I did want to say that. Oh, I was um, making a statement about, you know, what this person may gain. You know, what this person may gain. Well, they don't need money. Obviously, they get something in their personal life. But also, I was um, I was thinking of a joke. I would say what the big one is about. And I'm not going to I'm not going to tell what I wrote in my screenplay because then who would purchase it? You know, what producer would buy it and make it? If I told what my screenplay is, but I was telling the joke that it's about uh, Eula May. Eula Mae Jones, the big North Baton Rouge welfare matter. That's the big one. You get $100,000 worth of food stamps a month till the iPhones came out and Steve Jobs fucked it up. No. Till the iPhones came out. Now that bitch can't get that $100,000 worth of food stamps no more. And so, how would we work that? We'll work that shit out some of the big, the big one is Eula Mae Jones. The big North Baton Rouge welfare man busy getting a hundred thousand dollars worth of food since a month. And he served one day in jail. But but I'm gonna leave that one off. Um, because that's not what my screenplay is about. But anyway, we're going to I'm gonna go ahead and put that behind me. Like I said, if I said what it was about, I couldn't sell it. And it's probably something, um, So, with that being said, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pray and hope that my faith will increase. 
so I can come through this triumphantly. I get my office, I go in and begin to uh, hire a cast and garner some, um, and, and uh, put together with everything I need. Hopefully I can have my play uh, people in rehearsal soon for the idea that I have. I want to come through this triumphantly so they be more than just a genre, before they be more than just an entertainment genre. Yeah, I want to be more than just an entertainment genre. I don't think people will be interested in it if it's just an entertainment genre, a film that a play that I'm making about about God. You know, I want to be a little more than just an entertainment genre. Since, since I do profess Christ, I should be able to come through this. So you guys, I will keep you posted. I will keep you posted. And as far as the case study, God said, I don't need to show people that. I don't need to show people what has happened. I don't know why. He said, I don't need to show people that. So I'm going to postpone that for a while. I mean, you can see, you'll be able to see any changes that happen to me physically. Um, because I will continue to come on with uh, my posting about my work and my goals and my prayers that I'm, I'm praying for to come through triumphantly. So with that being said, um, I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. Anyway, y'all have a blessed, uh, blessed day. And I'm going to believe I'm have a blessed day. And I'm going to, of course, you all won't see any changes to my, my circumstances in Jesus' name. You all be blessed.